One of the first techniques I used in this project is using ferrules. Ferrules are these really handy kind of crimp connectors, but they're a little bit opposite to what you normally see from an automotive crimp connector. I have a whole box full of them. You can see that they have some insulation that goes around some type of crimp that's hooked up to a connector. The idea there is that the main electrical connection is going to be happening outside or away from the wire, whereas in this guy, all the, elect the electrical connection is happening at this point right here. This guy in particular is a, a double gain, so it'll accept two wires of the same uh, wire gauge versus one that has a single, and this is just for a single wire. They're useful for making connections to kind of Euro circuit breakers. I'm actually using them to connect to a Euro uh, like a terminal block. And that's what I have installed inside the Jeep. To simply connect one of these guys, make sure you have the right size ferrule, right size wire. Best way to find that information is just go on the internet and to search for the right size ferrule for the wire gauge that you're gonna be working with. Next step is to get this guy uh, stripped here. This guy is pushed all the way in. Sometimes it goes past this point and you can just cut off the extra excess. In this case, we're good. Then using a, a crimper, I got this guy off of Amazon. It's worked pretty well so far. They have all the types of different kinds. You just push it in and crimp all the way down until you stop. All right, this guy's been crimped. It's not going anywhere. You can see it's made some perforations on the sides. That's actually holding the wire to the ferrule itself. Now, that's great for connecting to terminal connection that's very clean, but what if I have to do wire to wire and what if it's in a place where I don't want a lot of ingress, I don't want a lot of dirt, water, anything getting into the wire connection to cause it to go bad in the future. In this case, I'm going to be using a, a, a standard crimp connector. I'm going to remove the plastic sheath and I'm going to be covering it with some, uh, with some heat shrink tubing which will go over everything. In this case, I'm going to be making this connection right here. I'm going to strip these guys down just enough so they will fit inside that that uh, crimp. I'm going to cut away the insulation of that crimp. So I'm just using one of these guys. I'm using the red size, so it's more on the smaller end. It depends on your application, depends on what you're doing. In the most case, for this for, for this whole project, it's been small gauge wire, so I haven't had to worry about using a bigger one. And I go along, and I go along the edge here. You can see what I'm doing. I go along the edge here, and I'm removing all this plastic. Now, if you're working with a long string of wire, if you're using, or if you're working with a a, a multi-connect conductor wire like this guy then you definitely want to attach or run the the heat shrink onto the wire before you actually make that final crimp or else you won't be able to get it through whatever you have on the end here so this guy is set I'm gonna crimp it wherever my crimp went oh there it is so this is an old stack on like they don't make these anymore crimper it's probably one of the best crimpers I've used since I've done all these projects. You just put it in place and you crank it down. And then it's made a pretty decent connection there. This guy is really solid. It's not gonna go anywhere. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Finally, make sure you get some heat shrink that will uh, will fit the diameter of the crimp, not so much the wire. You have to make sure that final resting state of the heat shrink 
will maintain or go against the wire and the, uh, the crimp here. In this case, I have some 3.6 millimeter diameter heat shrink tubing. I'm gonna cut it, usually I cut it around two or three times the length of this crimp. So you can see I've already have it here about, so it's about, it's about three lengths, three, three or four lengths. I like to make sure that it's pretty long so we don't have to really worry about anything getting inside anytime soon. So I've rolled it over. The crimp is right about in the middle. And finally, the, the, the final step here is to heat it up. It's it just shrunk all the way around everything. It's providing some protection from the elements and there's not really any way anything's going to get in there. Uh, over time, it might degrade, but uh, this will provide a very stable connection for a long time. So for, for some final protection for some multi-core wire, uh, I also kind of discovered these, these end caps. So these end caps can just be used to protect uh, a wire without anything coming out of it. But you can also drill a hole in here and extract some of the strands of the wire and that'll help protect the, the insides of the, the multi-core wire, make sure there's not any ingress of water, anything that could damage those wires over time. So those are the kind of the three main things, the ferrule technique and the kind of wire to wire connections. The wire to wire connections, remember, is useful for connecting wires, for the long strands from a multi-core wire to say a relay in this case we did a relay or you can use it to connect to a shorter strand that will be connecting to a more of a blade connection so i have one of those here so one end is a ferrule you can see it the other end is actually connected to a blade a blade crimp and that's useful for connecting to things like switches anyway that's it for now. That's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you like this video. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.